So I just recently completed my eighth 100 mile run, the Fort Clinch 100 miler. And I also recently ran the 150 mile run at Skydive. And as I often do, I look ahead. And while I have the next year planned out, I'll be running my first 100 miler at about 20,000 feet of elevation gain, which is Eastern States up in Pennsylvania. And I'll be doing another run that hopefully will be a fast 100 miler. I'd like to run a PR in 100 mile distance. But this next year is lined up, but looking ahead maybe two, three, four years into the future, it really has me excited and intrigued at the ultra running challenges that lie ahead. Um, so I'd like to share just a few of those, those series of races and individual races that really intrigue me. I'll start out with Vol State. It's a 314 mile race and it goes on for 10 days. So you can break it up into reasonable distances run each day. It starts by you cross a ferry over the Mississippi River in Missouri and then you run all the way to northeastern Georgia all 314 miles. And that race intrigues me because for one the hardest race I've done so far was Mark Twain. The hardest 100 miler because I've done 150. Uh, with Mark Twain and I met a man there, John Cash, who is an elite athlete in the sport of ultra running. He's run 24 hour races. He's, I'm pretty sure he's like a top 10 in the nation right now. Maybe not quite, I'm, I'd have to look into that. But he's a, he's a very good ultra runner, especially in the 24 hour races. And he has completed the Vol State 314 mile race from Missouri all the way to northeastern Georgia. So that intrigued me, that the fact that he's done that, I met him in my toughest challenge yet. Um, so that's Vol State. That's a challenge that really intrigues me. One that recently popped into my mind was you split the country down with the Mississippi River. It's like where Vol State starts. Um, and what I could do is I could run the hardest 100 mile race east of the Mississippi and the hardest 100 mile race west of the Mississippi in the same year. And while hardest is subjective, you can measure like elevation gain, which is a pretty good indicator of the difficulty level of the 100 mile race. And based on that, you could look at Cruel Jewel 100 mile race east of the Mississippi, which is in Georgia. It's a very beautiful race. I, I know someone, Andrew Barrett, who's run that race, and I just messaged him today asking him about that, and he said it, it's an experience that every ultra runner needs to challenge themselves to try. The Dragon Spine is a part of the course, which is also featured in the Georgia Death Race. And the Dragon Spine, he said that it's just something that every ultra runner needs to, to go for. So Cruel Jewel, is, it's 106 miles and 33,000 feet of elevation gain. So that's a challenge that really intrigues me. And then that same year, because that race is held late May, and that same year, only a couple months later, I could do in August, early August, it's pronounced Ure, it's spelled like Ore. It's in Colorado. And that, based on the objective measurement of elevation gain, you could probably say is the most difficult race 100 mile race west of the Mississippi. That's Oray 100. And that is partially on the course of the Hard Rock, which is a race that you may have heard of, Hard Rock 100 mile. It, in Hard Rock, you have to qualify and it's a difficult thing to get in. Oray is something that I'm pretty sure first come, first serve, you can sign up and get in. So doing both of those races in the same year, Cruel Jewel 100 and Oray 100 is a ultra running challenge that intrigues me. Finally, one thing that really intrigues me is the Grand Slam of 200 mile races by Candace Burt. She's the race director that, she has really endeavored to create these awesome, amazing races where you don't have to do so many loops. It's more of like an out and back or more like not having to retrace your steps nearly as much. Because a 200 mile race is so long 
that it'd be very easy just to have to do 28 loops, like the Skydive 200. And there's nothing wrong with that. You could, it's so much easier on your support crew. But to be able to set a 200 mile race, say like the Bigfoot 200, which is one of Candace's races in the Grand Slam of 200s, it's, I, I, do, I believe that you don't have to retrace your steps throughout that 200 mile race. It's like a point to point race. And you run around Mount St. Helens, the Cascade Mountains. It's, it's gorgeous. I've seen videos on it. So the Grand Slam of 200s by Candace Burt is what, it's this ultimate ultra running challenge that intrigues me in the future. And I believe she currently has four 200 mile races and she's working on a fifth one for the Grand Slam. Uh, and just to list them off, and they might not be in order sequential order that I'm listing them, but there's, there's going to be the Arizona 200, which is not yet developed, but is in the process of being developed. And I love Arizona, so I'd love to go up there and check that out again, run 200 miles. There's the Moab 200, which is in Utah, and beautiful, like near the Arches National Park in Utah. And then there's the Bigfoot 200, which I already mentioned, around Mount St. Helens and the Cascade. Cascade Mountains. And then there's Tahoe 200, which is around Lake Tahoe. You circumnavigate the lake and all the difficult trails. And the guy I mentioned that has done Cruel Jewel and recommended it to me and told me about the Dragon Spine, he's also completed the Tahoe 200. So I'll have to message him and ask him about his experience in that race. So there's just a video telling you maybe two to three years, two, three, four years from now, some of the ultra running races that intrigue me that I would like to complete. So, hope you got something from this. Thanks.